four months ago. So in today's episode, we'll be making what? Our gray smart doll will not arrive on time. Ah! Two months ago. A chaos vinyl bundle. <laughs> Ta-da! This is our gift from Danny to himself. Oh, it's Diego. Happy. Cheers. Cheers, kiss. It's the one that we were supposed to get for Marceline. So it's a gray body that we bought secondhand. <laughs> this one, arguably a mistake. Today. Hi, I'm Barb and I'm Alex and we're in trouble and we're in Ontario because we have a problem. As you can see, we finally have a gray doll or four. So we future Marceline. Let's go! <laughs> While we were doing this doll, something very exciting happened. We hit 200,000 subscribers. <gasps> <laughs> we are very excited to hit this milestone. It took us a while, but we are so grateful for every single one of you. And we hope that you stick around to see more of our shenanigans. And to celebrate, we decided to roll out some merch a little bit before than we thought. There's gonna be a few designs, we are still working on more, but we decided that since we have a reason to celebrate, we might just as well give it a shot. Marceline has a very cool bass guitar that looks like an axe and if you know me and my little army of robots, you know that I will make it. Add to that my recently gained confidence in circuits and soldering and you bet that I will put lights into it too. I designed everything from scratch in my favorite CAD software, Fusion 360. Since smart dolls are large, the props also have to be quite big, so I split the components between the 3D printer and the laser. I used a translucent resin to make the axe blades, as they are the part that will light up, as well as some of the more geometrically complex pieces like the headstock and some knobs. As you can see, they yellowed a bit, but we're not gonna be too worried about that now. I made sure to clean up the surface of the blade with some sandpaper and make sure to sand the sorta inner space where the LEDs will go to make sure that the light is diffused. While curing the parts, a bit of resin got stuck in the LED holes and got hardened, so the LEDs don't quite fit anymore. Thankfully, that's easily fixed with a drill. A quick light check confirmed that this was going to be an epic prop for sure. Now for the parts I cut on our x M1 laser, which is the big pieces and long pieces that wouldn't make sense to print and some small bits to match. The plan is to sandwich the LED circuit and axe blades between the faces of the body of the guitar. For the missing top and bottom, I made these thin pieces that will stack up to build the height and one of my most favorite parts of the projects, it will be powered from an amplifier and connected with this cable which makes it look like a legit electric bass. That's what this black part is for. After a dry fit, I started gluing the pieces together with some super glue. I started by assembling the layered top and bottom walls. Then I sanded the pieces to get the best fit possible and attached the blades to the front face. I inserted the walls and glued in the plug and stopped here with the body for now. I added another layer of wood for the fretboard and the rest of the wooden details. After the glue was dry, I tested the axeability of the prop and deemed the quality very good. <laughs> Quick test of the plug and we're ready for the LEDs. I added all of the lights into the body and made sure to test that all of the lights are actually working. I super glued them in place, making sure that the polarity of the LEDs is the same as the sketch I made and proceeded to have doubts, as it always goes with an LED project for me. Let's test it out before I commit to doing something that's not gonna work. Battery pack doesn't work. Why? I don't know. Am I stupid and is the polarity wrong? Why? <laughs> Why do you not work? Change battery. Okay, it was the batteries. So this works. Sleeve, and we should see the light. Yes! So sleeve, sleeve, tip, tip. Got it. After figuring that out, I went a bit of assembly line style and cut some of the pieces, connected them with solder, and then I put solder on some other pieces, and then other this tree-like thing. <laughs> to be honest, I made this so long ago that I forgot what's going on here. <laughs> But I connected the pieces together in a way that seems to agree with the laws of physics, all right? Let's see if it works. Hey, yes. 
It does. Okay, so with that out of the way, I wired the DC plug to a long cable, added some shrinky dinky tubes, and with some hot glue, I secured the wires in place. And with that, the back cover could be put in place. A final test of the lights seems to suggest that I didn't mess up anything while putting the back cover on. For some reason, most likely some rogue resin, the headstock didn't fit on the guitar, so with a sharp exacto knife I shaved it down a bit and it now fits. I secured it with some super glue and the guitar is ready for its first solo. <laughs> To give justice to Marceline's punk outfits, I decided to make her pants from two fabrics. I designed this checkered print and ordered it printed on some light cotton. With most of these fabric printing companies, the sample size is more than enough for a doll garment or two, and you can get the scale of the print so accurate, and I love it. The pattern for these pants is available on our website, enchantarium.com, but stick out till the end to catch a discount code I have prepared. I cut one side of the pants from each of the fabrics I chose, making sure I have mirroring pieces. For the waistband and pocket linings, I chose a white cotton to minimize the staining risk. I start by assembling the pockets. I have my pocket fronts already surged, and after a quick ironing, I top stitch them onto the pocket pouches along the curved line. Next, the pouches get attached to the front pieces red sides together along the pocket curve, which after sewing, I clip into as you do with tight curves. The pocket can now be folded away to the wrong side, pressed and top stitched along the edge. After that, you can fold the pouch in half and look how perfectly the print lined up. We can now stitch the pockets with themselves at the bottom to make sure our doll stuff doesn't fall out. The front pieces are ready now. On the back pieces, we will sew in the darts. To mark them, I like to cut them out of the paper pattern and trace them with a heat erasable pen. I then pin them together and sew from the tip of the dart. The back can be sewn together at the back crotch seam and the fronts can be added to the backs along the side seams. I decided to punk up the outfit by adding some decorative zippers. I've never added a zipper like that before, so let's learn together. I marked my zipper length and I added a box around it, which was one centimeter wide. I then added another piece of fabric, which don't do it, I'll remove it later, and sewed around my draw box. I then cut through the fabric down the middle, making sure I make slits to the corners at the ends. I then realized that temporary markings are, well, temporary. Zapomniałam, że używam takiego zmywalnego pisaka żelackiego i mi się zmyło. Nagrałaś to? Tak, nagrałam to, mamo. Bra. Kurde. I remarked the second zipper placement and this time, as you can see, I didn't add the second fabric piece and I recommend you do it this way too. I glued the edges down to make sure that they stay put while we add the zippers, which I have cut down to size. I add some glue to position the zipper in place and double check that the zipper pull ends up where I want it, which is near the side seam and not the inseam. I stitched all around the zipper, which will be easier if you use a zipper foot. Ale adorable są te zamki, uwielbiam takie detale. Now it's time to add the belt loops, which for now we just tuck down right sides together to the pants. Before we add the waistband, the front edges need to be folded in. On the left side, from the worst perspective, I fold in 7mm, and on the right side, double that, so 14. Then I sandwich the belt loops between the pants and the waistband and snip the waistband curve. I made sure to catch the front edges in the folded position and the waistband is sticking out past the fly edge. I then add the waistband right sides together to the main piece and sew them together along three edges, making sure I sew very close to, but not through, the fly. The waistband has a notch in the middle to accommodate the stand hole. I snip 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 and then I press 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 and I top stitch around the whole waistband. I add my cute little tag and it's time to finish the belt loops. I fold the edge down and top stitch them close to the waistband edge. Perfect. I double check where the front crotch seam should end and I sew that in. Dam builder, bo chciałam zrobić tak, żeby się zapinało po damsku, a się zapina po męsku chyba. Na prawdziwych spodniach się zapina z lewej strony idzie na górę, a u mnie idzie z prawej strony na górę. Bra, no trudno. After that whole debacle, I hemmed the pants and sewed the inseam. I clipped the seam allowance at the crotch because it helps the pants lay nicer 
and I trimmed the zippers before turning the pants to the right side. The last detail is adding a snap in the front and the pants are finished. I don't really like 3D modeling, but if it's making faces, I can push through. So I decided to modify the free distro head that Danny provided on his website and give her an open mouth with small vampire teeth and a big smile. 3D sculpting is much like real life sculpting, but you do it on a screen. So I pushed and pulled on the digital clay to make it do as I want. I made her ears spikier too and make her eyes more happy. This is how it compares to the original. So much cuter, in my opinion at least. I sent the file to Barb for printing and it didn't quite work out. The head got a bit squished due to misprint, but it's going to be fine for now to make a wig. Since Marceline has super long hair, usually, I'm going to harvest the wefts from this wig Barb bought for one of her skating carnival parties. I believe she was Frankie Stein? I added a 3D printed head cap to the head and covered it with some cling film. To make the head cap, I'm using some stretchy fabric and glue, which I spread with a brush. It was before I discovered that doing this with my fingers works much better. <laughs> I want to give her a side shave, so I'm marking where to cut the wig cap. I have never done anything remotely close to a side shave wig and I think I've made it clear before that hairstyling is not my best or favorite part of making the dolls, but let's just give it a shot, why not? After painting the wig cap black, I started applying the wefts from the bottom up. To add some volume at the top of her head, I added a bump made out of black foam clay and I will cover it with more hair. I chose the best looking wefts for the front and side edge of the wig and it looks pretty nice like this but later I'm going to add more wefts from the inside part of the wig and this is what I managed to do 4 months ago. For the shoes I am yet again using Danny Chu's free boot pattern which I extended a bit to have 10 lace holes, like glany, which is the type of shoe that is popular among metalheads in Poland. Like back in the day, my sister Alex. <laughs> I cut them out of this grey faux leather and began assembly. I hemmed the heel pieces making sure to pleat the seam allowance and trim it away. I traced them and added them to the main pieces and had second thoughts. I'm gonna skip the folding over and maybe we'll just paint the edge because the edge is white so it's ugly i tried covering it with fabric paint but it also didn't work so i don't know what to do ah. i did paint the edges i am not a good painter <laughs> after that was done i redid the heel pieces and making shoes requires patience as the contact glue needs to dry before it wants to glue to itself i like the non-folded detail much better I wanted to remove some bulk by cutting the inner layer like Beth did in her video because she's smart, but the glue was very much stuck. I did glue this, but that was not smart. That was very not smart. Very not smart. You only glue... Oh god, I don't think I can pry this open anymore. Well, cheat. Okay, moving on. I'm gonna attach lining. And the way I do it is... Slap it on, sew around it, and then trim it. As I said, I did. After stitching, I trim the lining and apply some fray check to the edge so it doesn't fray and look ugly. Next were the eyelets. As you can see, my punch is shit. I managed to work with what I had and decided to add a pop of color to the eyelets and with the limited colors I had, I make a sorta rainbow. I think that's the vibe. I'm gonna ask Alex. <laughs> Cute. Cute? Okay, the art director has approved. All 40 eyelids done, and I think they look really cute. I added the tongue pieces to the toe caps and added the lining. Grip! <laughs> I then marked out the placement of the pieces in respect to one another and stitched the upper together. Time to work on the 3D printed last. I stick my insole to the last with some tape and prepare the upper by tying it together with some ribbon. Then I can stretch the upper over the last and begin gluing and pinching and pulling the leather to the underside of the shoe. I really like how the original boots look, but I know that I can't quite get them to look the same myself. 
Some wizards must put them together for Smart Doll and I think I will stop using this pattern because it brings me a lot of frustration that it doesn't look how I want it to. I managed to get them to look decent-ish in the end and I glued them into my combat boot sole which I created for Totally Spice, Alex. I thought it would match this punky aesthetic. The last few details are putting it in the branded insoles and fixing this issue. I think we need to stop this, that's what I always do anyways. After adding some filler to the cap and the laces, which are mismatched because I couldn't find a long enough matching pair, the shoes are finished. Psych! Then we had to reschedule the video and after I picked the shoes back up, I was about to throw them away because I decided I didn't like them anymore. But then I had this idea. How do you like it? Spiky. I can try different packing without the central one. Maybe start with two rows. Leave this one and do it on the other one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> this is the other option. But I think I like it more than this one. Hola! It's gonna be huge! I decided to go with the second arrangement option for the spikes, so I drew out where I should put them more exactly for them to be somewhat even. The shoes are not exactly the same and a bit wonky, so I'm hoping that the spikes will make that less obvious and more epic. Cutting out the holes for the spikes was hard, even for two people. It would have been way easier if I did it before. Potrzebuję, żebyś waliła młotem. Okay. Może walisz trzymać. Tu, teraz? No. Mocniej? A co wszystko masz? Plastik. O, to no, poczuć, no. że weszło w plastik. Fantastic, widzisz? We tried for a bit to make the holes, but we cracked the sole and I didn't want to risk it anymore, so I mainly cut X-shaped holes, I guess, and trimmed a bit of the fabric and put the spikes through those, because they were screw-on spikes. It was pretty time-consuming, but definitely worth it, and took this custom in a direction I didn't expect, but really fell in love with. I'm done! With one! Ah, but it's so cool! After doing the other shoe and after a few fittings, we decided to let go of the two top eyelets because the shoes just didn't look proportionate. So they got a snip 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 and I gave them to Alex for a painting. Since we dived more into a punk aesthetic, I thought I would make her one of those upcycled vests, but obviously I had to make one from scratch. I used a pattern from my friend Tatiana for her denim jacket as a starting point and I readjusted the proportion a bit and cropped it and left the sleeves out. Let me show you what I did to make it look more like a DIY job, which is the opposite of what I usually strive for. Just to protect the armholes, I'm going to do a stitch a few millimeters away to stop the fraying at a certain point. And after that, we'll do the side seams and then hem the same as we're doing for the armholes. And it's done! Except for the, you know, everything else that we need to do, like decorating and stuff. Now it's time to sort of pull out some of these threads, I guess. Oh, I think actually we're gonna pull on the white threads. So the bottom is easy because it's all a straight line, but the problem is with the sleeves where the grain of fabric or the angle at which the fabric is cut relative to the grain of the fabric makes it difficult to only leave the black strands, if that makes sense. I think I'm just gonna gently pull them out and then cut them and hope that not too many white strands show up. Otherwise it's gonna be like black, white, black, white, and that's not gonna look good. But yeah, it's similar to seam ripping, but more anarchist, which I like. But I think it's gonna be cute. I have a bunch of these ring snaps, which are much easier to install than the other ones I have, so I went with those. You basically just slam them with a hammer and it's done. Tiny clothes just awaken some sort of instinct in me. <laughs> it's so cute. I added more of the spikes to the color, both because I had some more of them and because having the same feature in a few spots on the doll makes it a bit more cohesive and intentional. Now it's time to decorate it with some sewn-on patches and pins. Marceline has this cat sweater in the show, so I decided to put a big cat on the back. 
I made myself a template and cut the cut out of some red fabric. I stuck it onto the back with a glue stick and sewed around the border of it with some black thread. I then traced out the eyes and mouth and added the details in yellow and black thread. I am not an embroiderer, but I think the quality of my embroidery job fits the bill of, you know, the punk who wanted to have something cool in their jacket and made it themselves. I also added some iron-on shapes that resemble the characters from the show and other small decorations that resemble pins. The last piece of this outfit would be something to cover the boobies and I decided to go for a simple tube top, but to make it less simple I decided to add ribs to it. Because I want to line it white, as red fabrics tend to stain, I lined the ribs with black lycra, using some fusible double-sided tape. I then put my lining together with the main piece and sewed the top and bottom edges, leaving a gap for turning, which now looking back at it, I left it in the front, so maybe don't do that. I then folded the tube into itself and sewed the back seam all around, making sure I aligned the previous seams. Before I sewed, I checked that it would even turn out, and it seemed like it would, so I sewed it together and flipped it to the right side. I don't think I even bothered sewing the opening shut, as it's not visible while the door is wearing it. Barb printed another head for me, this time in grey resin, but it still wasn't the same shade as the grey vinyl, so I had to correct it a bit with some acrylic paint. I'm applying it in a few thin coats and after two layers of matte acrylic varnish and a coat of MSC sealant, I can start applying watercolor pencils and chalk pastels. Since we're doing a redesign of Marceline and not a specific look from the show, I decided to go a bit more creative with the eyes and the makeup than just two black dots. I'm inspired by modern punk slash goth slash just Instagram makeup in general with spiky eyeliner. Something similar to what I did last summer on Macy, our alien oracle. Every time I feel like the surface can't take more pigment, I sprayed the head with MSC. I'm adding a lot of chalk pastels to her lips and eyelids for a smoky look and to make the white eyeliner more visible with white acrylic paint. It's not going to stay white forever, I have a different plan for this part, don't worry. But while I have white paint on the brush, let's paint all the small white details that I usually add, like highlighting eyelid creases, adding tiny hair to the brows and painting tiny lines under the lip corners. I wanted to add a bit more color to her face, but most of the pigment got eaten by MSC after spraying, so it's not very visible this time. Now it's time for red in her makeup. If I tried to paint it with bright red without the white base, it would probably turn into a warm muddy brown and it would need a lot of layers to look decent. So I recommend adding a white base before applying a bright eyeliner. I added a bit of dimension with darker red and black and added even more pastels to the inner and outer corners. Even if this makeup looks already busy, I just can't skip the lashes. And when I have them ready, I'm adding two layers of Perlex powders in grey and lavender because everybody knows that vampires are sparkly. To make the eyes, I used some 3D printed bases and painted them teal. This time I decided to hand paint the eyes traditionally, because people complain when I do the design on my computer and print it out. I was wondering what kind of eyes she can have, since in the cartoon she has two black dots, and I decided to get inspired by this monster transformation where she has teal sclera and red center. I added yellow and it turned out like this. Last time I painted eyes by hand I did big stars in Maria's eyes and I love this effect so much that I decided to paint the stars here too. After two coats of resin they looked like this. I always wanted to make a doll with a lot of piercings. It's super easy on vinyl doll heads, but here we've got a 3D printed sculpt, so... Doing piercing is harder than I thought. I think I should do it before doing the face, so to sand all misperfections. Imperfections. These are a little bit too big, so I found a different technique and it's a mixture of a lot of things. I did this whole here. I hope I can repeat it one more, four more times. Wish me luck to do it four more times. So the Dremel was making huge holes and I want something more delicate and my technique is first doing a small spot with a heated pin, then carving as much as I can with a scalpel and then smashing the hole with a hammer and a thumbtack. Repeat the steps a few times if needed. 
and I also did an oopsie here because I wanted to make like an industrial but didn't work out so uh, I guess she has two cuts like a battle scar maybe with some werewolves this is the piercing set that I chose for her a lot of these decorative pins on her face a lot of rings in her ears a massive cross that was made from a metal sword and two cuts from destroyed holes but let's pretend this is just a cool body modification Let's finally take care of the wig again. I'm painting the shaved parts on the side of the head in black and grey. I glued yarn wefts from the bottom or the inside of the wig and I'm going to leave a few strands going down, but also flip them to make the edge a bit more natural looking. Then I added a little bit of hair gel and hairspray to set the yarn in place and she looks totally awesome in this hairstyle. I love it. Let's take care of the shoes. The soles for sure need to be black and that's pretty easy to correct with more paint. I decided that the leather also could be darker and I dry brush it black to better match the soles and overall color of the doll. I applied two layers of matte varnish to protect the whole thing. Okay, so I am back with everybody's favorite pattern. <laughs> A few finishing details need to be added before this girl is complete. I made a pair of penny holes to protect Marceline's new grey body from staining. I made it from actual penny holes and it's tricky to sew so I always stitch it through some tissue paper and have to pick it out but it's worth it. We can now take the pants which have been neatly filed away for a few months and tuck the penny holes in before realizing that a button needs to be added to the fly. Another thing that I needed to add was an amplifier for the guitar. Well, maybe not needed, but I wanted to house the batteries somewhere and I've been away from my robots for a few weeks and wanted to make some cool stuff with them. I tried printing it as a one piece on our big resin printer, but I managed to make a pretty time lapse of nothing over 12 hours. So because of the size of the thing, I opted to make it on my FDM printer and combine it with some wood pieces cut on the laser. I put the inner box together and started to add the corners and edge pieces that will make it a bit more soft and round and some parts weren't exactly as they should be. It's not as nice as if it were printed in one piece, but do I care? No. Did I have fun making it? Yes. Is that all that matters? To me, yeah. It became apparent to me that the more I misaligned things, the bigger gaps there were. So I filled them all with some wood filler and sanded it the next day. I then used some of this ugly old pearl paint as a primer, as I knew that the wood will suck the paint in. And then I used a black paint in two coats to cover the whole thing. Uh oh, does it not fit anymore? I'll make it fit. <laughs> if I have to use a hammer, I will. At least I won't have to glue it, right? <laughs> Nice! The guitar needed a few more details too, like the frets, which I made from silver wire and some strings. Four to be exact, because it's a bass guitar. I also made them from some other wire. To be able to play it standing up, she would need a strap for the guitar as well, so I carefully drilled some holes in the body of the guitar, of course, not the doll, to make room for some attachments. If you can hear it. That doesn't bode well. But it's fine. I added short straps and o-rings to the body with some small screws and made the strap with jewelry clasp to make it removable. And we, my friends, are finished. Unless Alex has a section here and she says that. Sorry. <laughs> I actually do have a section here because I couldn't stop myself from decorating the guitar and the vest. Nobody can stop me from decorating. I was thinking about a tribal-like design, then a patchy collage inspired by Hobby Brown from the new Spider-Man movie. It's awesome, go watch it. But it turned out that I needed something yellow to match the eyes, so I painted flames. I think it suits because Marceline has fire control powers. And then it's time for spicing up the vest. I'm painting faces of her friends, a bisexual flag and also some more flames, because why not? I added a few stars, symbols and dots and the vest is finished. I absolutely love it and I would totally wear it, maybe 10 years ago, but I love it. 
This is technically our pride video, so I want one more rainbow statement, and it's going to be the white lace. I'm shamelessly painting it with acrylic paints, not bothering to untie the whole thing. This way the colors are exactly where I want them to be, and with this colorful detail, she's finished. This time for real. This is how she turned out. I am in love with the open mouth mod on this doll, and I think she's super cute. I'm glad we are finally able to share this doll with you as well, and I think that having some time to think about the project also allowed us to make it super cool and like come up with these extra ideas like the piercings and then the guitar and then the cool appliques on the vest and the vest itself. So I think it's nice that we had this break. We had originally planned to release her in February, so she's been a long time coming. I always enjoy making cool props for our dolls, because it lets me use all of my cool robots. <laughs> if you'd be so inclined and check out my sewing patterns for smart dolls, there is a promo code, as I mentioned, the promo code is ADVENTURE, so grab my sewing patterns at a discount. As mentioned, we also have merch, and you can check it out at merch.angendarium.com. Calm. Happy Pride, everybody! I would love to do Marceline's girlfriend, Princess Bubblegum, as a doll, but unfortunately there is no pink skin smart doll in the current lineup. Would you like to see more dolls from Adventure Time? Who is your favorite character? Let us know in the comments down below. Mine is Bimo and I actually have a lot of merch with him. He's just too adorable. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day. Thank you for 200,000 subscribers. That's insane. And I hope to see all 200,000 of you next time. Bye. This video was made thanks to our Patreons. The biggest credit goes to our top Lost Sister tier supporters, Mary Helen Burns, Call Me Ash, Erin McCoy, and Red X. We also thank our cousin tier Patreons, Mary Chandler, Josephine Falk, Kaylee M, Melissa Navoa, Rinth, Fun of TA, Marilyn McGraw, Aaliyah J, Catherine G, Ashley, Etwell, Michelle Sweeney, Hannah Lemon, Elise Sherbert, Zari, Genevieve Duflock, Amelia Blackwood, Andrea Brigadier, Super Meow, Bowen, Inca, Stephanie, Tiffany Jeffers, Karaho, Landy Monk, Katie Baker, Karabu, Sivs Party, Dragon Art Customs, Muzi, Ninja Star Dezino, Dream Up, and not least but last, <laughs> Catherine Nodden. Thank you so much for supporting us. Let's go to the studio. Make a Marceline doll. Bye. Mmm. Number eight.